globally. Uh, and uh, we are thankful to our sponsors uh, who helped us this event to organize. Uh, so our global platinum sponsor is Network with C California Fund. Our global golden sponsor is ICU Ventures. ICU Ventures is a Kiev and London-based venture capital fund that invests in technology companies with ties to Central and Eastern Europe. Focused on helping ambitious founders build global businesses, ICT Ventures makes late, late seed and serious A investments across the tech sphere. Thanks to our global silver sponsor, Silicon Valley Syndicate Club. I would like to remind you uh, that the winner of today's unicorn battle in Milan will participate at our Unicorn Cup finals together with uh, the winners of preliminary events that were held uh, this year. Uh, so uh, for uh, this period of time, starting from the first quarter of this year, uh, we uh, conducted our online events in 25 countries and 50 major cities. And we are reminding you to put this event, our Unicorn Cup Finals, in your uh, calendar and join this exciting event. We hopefully think it uh, will be organized duly the 30s. Uh, so, um, uh, we in our company sincerely believe uh, that all great ideas uh, come true only with like-minded people and partners. So we are open for uh, exploring partnership opportunities to help local startups and investors to play a more significant role in the global ecosystem. And we are always glad to welcome new partners to our network. Uh, and uh, uh, I would like to say that uh, the last year, uh, our network reaches 1 million of users. I would like to introduce you to our company Startup Network. Uh, we are a smart ecosystem uh, that consists of uh, various software solutions and internet platforms and unites startups, investors, business angels, experts, professional scouts and high-level managers uh, in a single business space which makes it possible to solve quickly and efficiently any task in the field of innovation and startups. Uh, unicorn battles is the oldest part of our ecosystem. So it's an open competition where startups pitch for private investors and uh, venture funds. Uh, we are almost conquered the world, world with uh, our online events. Uh, and now all our events are online and anyone of you can join us from your home and you're able to meet startups and VCs from all countries all over the world. Uh, so we started our battles uh, in 2009. And for this time, uh, we have organized more than 200 events in different parts uh, of the globe, in a great variety of uh, European countries, the Middle East, Asia, United States. So we are um, conducting events as well uh, in USA and Silicon Valley, where our headquarters are. And uh, right now, uh, you could see the best local solutions from around the world. Uh, so we uh, had uh, invited, <coughs> initiated a special program for startups uh, willing to apply for top American accelerators. And we helped them to relocate and grant funds uh, for service uh, worth uh, 50k. 
uh, and we invite best uh, speakers and mentors uh, to coach our startups online and offline uh, for our acceleration program. Uh, join us to become a better version of yourself. Uh, the most recent part of our ecosystem is Network VC Fund. Uh, so, uh, with uh, this fund, uh, we are helping uh, to participate as an investor in our pre-acceleration program for the chosen startups. Uh, and the second strategy is to be a lead investor in our Silicon Valley Syndicate Club. Uh, so, Silicon Valley Syndicate is a special structure uh, that allows venture syndicates for different startups be easily organized. And now, any private investor uh, starting uh, with a 10K check could join our syndicates and get an access to best startups uh, that we had found through our global network. I would like to pass a word to Natalie Prosciutto. She's uh, the head of VC House, and she will tell a few words about it. Natalie, are you with us? Yeah, thank you, Julia. Hello, everybody, and I'm glad to see you here today. I'd like to introduce to you our new project, VC House. It is an invitation-only online community and a network created exclusively for VCs, where they can exchange deals in which they participate as lead investors. And what is more, it is also will be a platform for specialized LPGP events, where family offices and institutional investors have an opportunity to meet VC funds. So I invite you to join our VC house. And now I'd like to uh, return a floor to the extraordinary girls, Kate and Lena, who are hosts for today's event. And uh, they will lead you through our unicorn battle in wonderful city of Milan. Girls? Thank you very much, Natalia. Uh, of course, this event will be impossible to hold without our reliable friends from Italy. So today we want to say a special thank to our community and media partners like Silicon Finance team from California. If you have a startup, pay attention to this program because it helps you, can help you to reach investors from the US. Also to Campania New Steel, certified incubator for Italian startups, to install a team of uh, tech lovers that make content available for everyone, uh, to Venture Incubator Key Capital, to the Innovation Hub 012 Factory, and to Social Fair, uh, who is the first center for social innovation in Italy, and of course to all our funds represented by our judges today. Uh, thanks again for your support. So how are we going to move on? Uh, now each judge will say a few words about him or herself. Then we will start the hottest part of our competition, the pitch session of the top 10 startups um, from Italy. After that, we will have a panel discussion with a special guest, Alexandra Sasha Johnson, yeah. and he, uh, here are some insights about VC investments during the pandemic, and other uh, questions also will be discussed. So please sit back, relax, and I hope that this online trial uh, shows you that our unicorn battles are really worth your attention and you become our regular guest at the offline events in future. So I pass the word to Lena and wish you everyone a pleasant time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kate. Thank you so much, girls. So before we will start the uh, pitch competition, please greet our honored judges who volunteered their valuable time to our event today. Uh, dear judges, please introduce yourself and uh, uh, your funds you represent uh, shortly for one minute, pointing out the industry, check size, uh, state and uh, geographical location of startups you invest in. 
Uh, so, Alexander, could you start, please? Uh, thank you, Lena. Thank you, everybody uh, who come to our battle today. And our fund is industry agnostic. Uh, usually, we invest from 50 to 250K. And geographically, we prefer to invest in US or European based startups. Thank you so much. Thank you. Welcome. So, Roman Nikiforov, are you with us Nikitov. today? Roman Nikitov. Nikitov, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Are you with us today? Yes, hello. Uh, hello yes, Italy. please. Hope everybody is, uh, uh, is healthy and uh, in good spirits. Uh, uh, I'm from uh, ICU, I represent ICU Ventures, and uh, we're a uh, Kiev and London based. Uh, uh, fund that invest at the late seed or round A. Usually the ticket size would be from 200 to a million. Uh, we prefer companies that originate at least to have relevance to Central or Eastern Europe, but we keep 30% of our portfolio, uh, um, you know, opportunistic to the global opportunities. Looking forward to the pitches uh, that uh, we're going to see today and I wish uh, best luck to all the participants. Thank you so much, Roman. Great to have you with us today. So, Priscilla, are you with us? Hi, uh, yes, I'm here. Welcome. Uh, thank you so much for having me again. It's the second time that I'm judging at one of these unicorn battles, and it's a pleasure to be back. Um, so my name is Priscilla Lavois. I'm the managing director of Demium Barcelona. Uh, Demium is a pre-team, pre-idea incubator with 10 locations across Europe. So I manage the Barcelona hub. Uh, we look for entrepreneurs who want to start projects but don't necessarily have co-founders or have a particular idea that they want to work on. And it's a six month program where we provide all the support to uh, implement and grow your business model. Thank you so much. Thank you and welcome. So dear judges, uh, who would like to be the next? Hello? If you want, I can speak. Yes, please. Welcome. Hi, I'm Fabio Pizzetti, uh, founder and CEO of Econium Blockchain Ventures. I've been an invest, uh, an entrepreneur first and then an investor in the tech and digital uh, uh, arena for uh, several years. Uh, but since uh, four years, I'm mo mostly focused on blockchain ventures. And uh, we tended to invest uh, preferably in protocols and therefore in digital assets. But we also invest in equity of uh, of uh, startups that, um, that are have solutions and tools and uh, services for the blockchain industry. Thank you so much. Thank you and welcome. Next one, please. Hi, hello. Pietro. Hello. Can you see me? Yes, please. Hello, guys. Uh, thanks for having me as well. Uh, I'm Italian. I'm uh, angel investing. Uh, together with a bunch of uh, partners in crimes, uh, we are more into the seed early stage uh, stage. Uh, we are sector agnostic, uh, although we tend to like more the consumer goods uh, slash retail uh, technology enabled uh, initiatives. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot stay for the entire event today. But uh, since I'm in close uh, terms with Fabio, I know that uh, we could exchange uh, some comments uh, right after. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Pietro. Thank you. Next one, please. Hello, everyone. My name is Maxim Gorbachev. I am managing partner of Unicorn Capital Partners. We are managing uh, uh, newly funded uh, uh, venture capital fund. Uh, of uh, 65 million US dollars. Uh, our main focus on healthcare and uh, our usual ticket from one to five million US dollars. Thank you so much and welcome. Uh, next one, please. Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, I'm uh, Marat Tardi and I work for uh, CDP Venture Capital. Uh, that is the newly created management company uh, dedicated to the Italian uh, venture capital market. Um, I'm currently working in the uh, funds of funds team. So we invest in venture capital funds uh, throughout Italy and some international funds who wants to invest in Italy. 
Um, as of today, we manage investments in 14 venture capital funds for a total of 200 more startups. And we cover all stages from C to late stage capital uh, and all the ticket ranges. But the, the focus is on, on Italian companies. Thank you. Thank you so much. Welcome. Next one, please. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello, Hi. Sarah. Hi. Hi, this is Sarah. Um, I'm a, an investment manager at United Ventures. United is one of the leading Italian venture capital firm. Uh, we manage about 200 million uh, and divided in two funds. We are uh, sector agnostic and uh, we invest in Series A companies with tickets that varies from 1 million to 5 million roughly. Um, and in terms of geography, um, we invest uh, in Europe with a, with a specific focus on in Italy, but then we, we, we reserve part of the fund to, to other countries like the US, uh, Israel, Switzerland, and so on. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Next one, please. Hello, everybody. Hello. Can you see me? Yes. Okay. Hello everybody, I'm Antonino Sacchero. I run Festus Venture, uh, that is a, a private equity fund in Milan. Basically, we are focused on uh, corporate venture capital uh, and we support the international <coughs> of scale-ups. Thank you so much, welcome. Welcome, Antonio. Next one, please. Uh, hello, can you... Hello? Hello, hello, yes, please. Yes, uh, hi, I'm Walter Ricciotti. Uh, I'm founder and CEO of Quadrivio Group. Uh, we are alternative investors for more than 20 years, and we currently manage uh, over 1 billion euro in different uh, asset classes. Uh, we have offices in Milan, London, and Luxembourg, uh, and our geographical focus is uh, Europe. Thank you. Thank you so much, welcome. Next one, please. Hello, Lena. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes, please, Marco. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you for the invitation. I'm Marco Di Miceli, managing partner and co-founder of Sequito Capital, which is an independent company investing our capital and expertise in scale-ups. Sequito Capital was born only two years ago from the initiative of three people, Massimo Fasoli, our chairman, Anastasio Scalisti, who is based in Los Angeles, California, and me. Together with our network of network individuals, we invest approximately 1 million euro in rounds A and other instruments through club deals in Italy and abroad, mainly in the United States. And we focus on deep tail scale ups, developing software and IoT solutions with a business to business model. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next one, please. Hi, I'm here. Oh, Nicola. <laughs> Nicola. Please. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Hi, I'm uh, Guillaume Clo from uh, Validate Venture Partners. And what we do, we help startups and scale-ups um, actually expand their market share and ultimately help them uh, get a investment and that uh, and we operate within Europe um, and in the US. So basically looking for the next um, unicorn tech uh, startup and looking to see what uh, this battle has to offer. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much. Next one, Great. please. Yes. Okay, so I, I take the floor. Good afternoon again. Uh, Nicola Egan, Managing Partner and Venture Factory. I actually lead the, the first uh, Italian technology transfer fund, which means we basically invest very early stage since POC proof of concept in anything that comes out of Italian research institutions and sites. Uh, and we basically follow on our investments after the exit to the, the C round, so from POC to C round. Okay. POC to C round. Thank you so much. Who would like to be the next? Hi, hi everybody. I'm hi. Giorgio. I'm Giorgio Di Stefano. I'm the CEO of uh, Key Capital. Uh, we invest in very early stage uh, startups. Uh, and we are based in uh, Milan. Great, thank you so much. Next one, please. Hi everyone, my name is uh, Filippo Satolli. I'm from uh, Club Italia Investimenti 2. It's an investment company based in Milan. We basically invest in uh, uh, seed, 
and uh, we don't just make investment but we also follow the the growth of uh, the, the startup we're investing because I really want to go after Filippo. It's the dream of my life. So, um, <laughs> Riccardo Cirillo here, uh, founder and managing partner at TAP Capital, uh, London and Milan based uh, uh, VC fund manager. We are running our first fund at the moment. The focus is on uh, digital tech based uh, businesses with no specific uh, vertical. 70% um, of the fund to be invested in Europe, the rest elsewhere. Our sweet spot is Series A, Series B. Normally, we check of let's say two to four million per company in total. Thanks. Thank you so much. Welcome. Thank you. Next one, please. Yes, please. Who want to be the next? Hi, everyone. Do you Hi. hear me? Yes, please, Oksana. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here today as a judge and choose the best startup together with the uh, other honorary jury members. My name is Oksana. I am innovation manager at the Tech, Ukraine-based energy company. We are the biggest private investor in energy sector in Ukraine. I am a part of Innovation the Tech team and we are responsible for implementation innovative solutions for in our businesses. Cooperation with startups is among our key focuses. Uh, so I'm looking to hear all pitches and wish good luck for all teams. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Oksana. Thank you. Welcome. Next one, please. May I jump in? Yes, please. Hello, everybody. Uh, Hello. Ciao, ragazzi. Uh, my name is Evgeny Bajan. I represent the Positive Dialogue Management Company and in particular XD Capital, which is part of our group of companies. Uh, the mission of the Positive Dialogue Management Company is to promote a positive international dialogue based on a global partnership between countries, united by a spirit of solidarity and striving to lead the world of a new uh, on a new trajectory of dynamic growth and sustainable development in economical, scientific, technological, social, and cultural and environmental areas of human activity. It's a, a GR uh, venture. And IXD Capital is a venture builder, uh, an impact investment evangelist, combining private capital and innovations that promote uh, the development of the impact sector uh, in Russia and the CS country, countries in close cooperation with international uh, partners. IXD Capital actively interacts with the investment, financial, and banking sectors, as well as uh, with development institutions large international organizations and transnational, uh, transnational corporations on the topic of sustainable development and implementation of the Global 2030 Agenda. Uh, I wish good luck to all startups. Uh, we'll be happy to participate as a judge. Thank you. Thank you, Evgeny. Thank you and welcome. Um, who want to be the next one, please? Hi, uh, Benjamin Radomski. I'm yes. uh, originally from Sweden, from Stockholm. Um, I'm a serial entrepreneur. Uh, I founded in 2010 Business of Italy, which is a business facilitation uh, service provider. Uh, we have about 60 million uh, in our uh, network and also uh, 65,000 Italian companies. Uh, I'm also partner and founder of Spin Ventures in London. Uh, we invest and advise early stage businesses. Uh, it was set up to tackle social, uh, social economic challenges. Uh, the ventures in our portfolio currently are focused on uh, in inducing the level of uh, CO2 and plastic. Uh, tickets vary between 200 to around 1.5 million. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, uh, dear participants, could you open your videos, please? It's important. Thank you. So, who wants to be the next one? Yes, please. Sorry, Lena, what do you say? To switch on or off the video? I didn't get that. On. To switch on, on, on. Ah, uh, all right. While you are representing yourself, please switch on. Ah, okay, when, when, when talking. To, okay, fine. Good. Yeah, all right. To Thank be you. closer to each other. No, no, it's all right. No problem. Yeah, yeah, I can do. Okay. So, who want to be the next? 
Okay, so dear judges, thank you for your introductions. And now uh, let me tell you a little bit about uh, voting system today. Uh, so to start voting, you have just uh, to click the link you have got on mail uh, to get access to the profiles of today's startups. After this, you have to put marks uh, depending on investment potential from uh, one to five, when five is the highest mark, and uh, one is the lowest. Uh, so you have just to put marks without any confirmation bottoms and uh, uh, you could change the marks before the voting um, will be closed. I will let you know about it. Um, uh, dear attendees, uh, next information for you. Uh, you have a great opportunity to support also to support our participants. For it, you can just uh, register at the event page. Uh, we will send you the link in chat and uh, give your likes to, to your favorite startups. Uh, they uh, really need your support today, so do it please. Uh, based on the results of the judges online voting, one startup will be chosen uh, at the, uh, as a winner of the unicorn battle in Milan. Uh, so, welcome our startups. Today we have 10 participants. Uh, every, every team, every startup will have three minutes uh, for the pitch and three minutes for the uh, Q&A from our dear judges. Uh, uh, dear judges, to start the voting, uh, you have just to click the link uh, you have uh, got on email to get access uh, to the profile of today's presents and start voting. Um, so, uh, that's all from my side for today. Kate? Yeah, I that. And the first, will, yeah. the first will be Alessandro, Alessandro Monterosso. I with us. Page AI, uh, the name of his startup. Hello, everyone. Nice to meet you. Thank you for being here. Do you correctly see my screen? Yes. Okay. Let me know when I can start. Yeah, I will turn on the time. You will have only three minutes. That will start now. Good morning, everyone. I'm Alessandro Monterosso, co-founder and CEO at Patch AI, the first visual assistant for patient engagement. Uh, Drug development process is a complex process and it takes 15 years and more than 2 billion to bring a new molecule to the market. Also, we have seen, especially these days, that healthcare systems are burdened. What's the problem? Low patient engagement bring many issues. Low patient engagement means, means that they are not proactively doing uh, uh, their, uh, um, uh, adhering their, their cat pair. Uh, indeed, uh, we see that during drug development process, we have high grades of dropout, uh, they, uh, people don't adhere to the therapy plan and make 2.8 billion in additional cost. It's also true that uh, uh, pharma companies are collecting new type of data uh, beyond the pill. These are called real world data. And indeed, uh, during the last five years, we have seen more than 500% increase in the collection of real world data. Um, today, we will have technologies that allow us to uh, implement solutions that uh, engage patients and also collect valuable data. The problem is that the market offers solutions like this. The problem is not really the user interface. The problem is that competitors do not proactively engage patients. Indeed, they migrated the paper forms to the uh, digital solutions but they are still boring and not true in real time. So that's why we introduced to you Patch AI. We invented a new solution that is called Conversational Patient Report Outcomes. Our AI chatbot chat with patients like a friend would on WhatsApp in a highly empathetic way. We uh, propose a con cognitive platform that comprises a mobile app for patients that uh, empathetically talk with patients, reminding the therapy, and then there is part of gamification with rewarding pages, um, a health monitor, and education on demand. 
Uh, our engagement model uh, takes data from patients and leverages this to uh, uh, implement personalized engagement strategies via conversations. We are fully compliant with the highest standards of the market. And uh, which is the market? The market is uh, more than uh, 27,000 projects per year, potentially. And uh, what we want to take from this market is almost 80 projects and more than 12 million in the fifth year. Uh, our business model is simple, is standard of the market. Um, um, and why we're better than others? Because we fully customize for every single client, whereas the standard of the market is one size fits all approach. Um, uh, today, 95% of our patients are fully compliant with the therapy, which is our clients, Novartis and Roche, for example, the two of the top three company uh, in the globe. We are now accelerated from plug and play. Uh, our team is comprised by doctors, nurses, scientists, and tech nerds. And right now we are looking for 1.7 million, of which almost half has been uh, committed already. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sengu. Dear judges, any questions? I have a question. Yes, please, Maxim. Uh, so basically, you are focusing on clinical trials, trying to uh, switch from the clinical research organization, or uh, you are focusing on the products uh, which are already on the market and getting the real world evidence. Yeah, we are uh, complementary to the CROs. We integrate our backends with the CROs running the studies. Uh, we pull and push data directly from the patients. Usually, uh, the little um, a niche of the uh, digital value chain in the uh, market is uh, still outdated or paper form. So we uh, take there, we focus on patient engagement, and we pull and push data from the CROs. Okay. Do you have uh, any connections with electronic health records uh, and uh, mobile devices? Electronic health records is not yet needed and, and is a pretty complicated from uh, the clinical research to the standard of the practice uh, for some regulatory rules. In regards with mobile uh, devices like, such as wearables, so we're doing it uh, as a pipeline of 2020. So we are going to have the first device uh, by the head of the year. Can you tell please a little bit more about your traction? Yeah, so uh, as of today, uh, we've born 18 months ago. Um, we closed two big contracts, uh, one with Novartis, uh, uh, collecting data from a breakthrough therapy in the area uh, of neuroscience, uh, specifically migraine. Uh, it's an Italian uh, real world study. And now uh, we just closed the contract and the next week we're gonna go live with Rush, uh, a project targeting over 10,000 patients in the next 24 months. Um, we are now accelerated by Plug and Play headquarter in Silicon Valley as a uh, only uh, unique uh, Italian startup in health uh, in the health batch 10. Uh, we've been uh, accelerated by um, AT Health uh, and the Unicredit Startup Lab uh, in Italy and Europe. And uh, um, so far we raised around 1 million euros and now we're looking for 1.7 in order to um, uh, extend our runway of around uh, 15 months. Uh, do you have revenue for today? Yes, we got the first revenues in uh, the last year uh, with the one year uh, in advance of um, forecast around 50,000 euros where they set up fees of a project. Uh, this here, we, our target is half a million and the two thirds of those are covered by the current contract as I set up. And we're expecting more based on the uh, user uh, engagement. Okay, thank you. Any questions else? I have a question. Um, if uh, the, this software uh, can be applied to any type of uh, clinical trial or does it have any limitation? There are certain limitations for some therapeutic areas where the usage of a smartphone might be, um, uh, it might be a barrier, such as, for example, musculoskeletal or neurological problems. And in order to tackle these, uh, we will, uh, by the end of 2021, finish the um, test to speech and speech to text. Uh, so a, a voice virtual assistant for this kind of uh, patients. Um, uh, but usually uh, we don't have particular problems. We, um, we target broadly the therapeutic area based on the demand.
Uh, Alessandro, uh, could you elaborate a bit more on the business model, the monetization? I assume yeah. that it's a license, but uh, maybe you can uh, yes, tell us okay. a bit more. So our um, business model is uh, uh, aligned with the standard of the market. Uh, we have uh, um, uh, set up fees for the customization and the go live of the project. Then there are some recurring monthly uh, revenues uh, for the whole duration of the project. Usually the average is around 30 months. And then we have some closing fees. Uh, overall, uh, all these fees um, brings up to around 50 euro per patient per month, whereas the average revenue for one project is around half a million. 40% uh, of, of, of the uh, project are paid in advance before the study initiates, covering all our COS and uh, uh, leaving us the monthly recurring as pure margin. Okay, thank you. So Alessandro, uh, right now then your activity is limited to clinical trials, is that the case? It's clinical trials, real world studies and also patient support program. It means that is expanded clinical practice but still financially supported by pharma companies uh, whereas the provider of the service and the data owners are us, is us. Do you see at some point your solution being rolled out to GPs? It might be. Uh, as of today, we are starting this process in Italy, but we'll, we'll are gonna, we are starting from specific diseases, uh, mostly hemato-oncology diseases, in partnership with Roche, as you see here, Smart Health <laughs> Companion, uh, because uh, targeting GPs is a, a crowded market where we are targeting uh, um, specialized specialists, doctors, and uh, patients with certain conditions is a niche market. Uh, one, but still a niche market that no one tackled yet. Thank you. Okay, dear judges, I can, uh, I think that, that we can go on. And the next one is Andrea Baldini. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Yeah, thank, thank you, Alessandro. Well done. You can uh, continue your conversation in chat, uh, not to pause the event. So, Andrea. Uh, it's Flavia here, co-founder for AR Market. Oh, sorry. So let me share my screen. Hello, everyone. Can you, you see the uh, full screen, please? Oh, yes. yes, yes. Can you see my slides? Yes. Okay. So hi, everyone. So I'm Flavia Daltrui. I'm co-founder of AR Market. Our startup uses the power of augmented reality and virtual reality immersive technology to reshape education and training. We want to answer the need of educational system and companies for training students and workers by creating passion, interaction, and engagement for higher memorability of concept and higher impact. And we want to do that across the whole cycle of knowledge and life from being young to more major ages. Uh, our solution is to turn knowledge into something cool through AR and VR experiences and embedded gamification for example, we use AR and VR to simulate work environments and develop skills which are required in real life, or we create training models starting from more traditional frameworks and turning into gamification, gamified content. Our business model is twofold. For B2C, we have developed an app premium and we act as publisher, so with the educational books and educational games enriched with AR and VR experiences and content. For B2B, we offer companies APSAS, personalized solution, and VR situational training in different areas like skills development, career growth, labor safety, customer care, and, uh, and more. The market potential is huge. Uh, it's uh, more than 200, 250,000 uh, euros globally on EdTech with more than 2.5 billion users uh, active in AR and VR. Uh, competition is active, is very active. The main risk we see are competitors longer in market with more financial uh, resources. However, we do believe in our points of differences related to our publisher approach and uh, the gamification approach uh, for learning by playing. We are a self-funded startup and we are looking for a first round of funding by 2020 to make sure that to be able to scale up fast to increase our R&D investment, our team, and uh, building partnership commercially. 
Uh, our team is multifunctional with a mix of corporate, entrepreneurial, and technical expertise with graphic design 3D artists. Uh, despite being a, a young company, we received uh, the Seal of Excellence Award by Horizon 2020 and the special prize and Sir Young in the contest of Marzotto Prize for our EdTech products and ideas. Those are, are our contacts. So thank you for your attention and I'm here ready to take your questions. Thank, thank you very much. much. You judges, any questions? Hi, I'd love to learn more about your traction. Yeah, my tra uh, our traction. Uh, so far, we are uh, uh, in the range of, uh, we are estimating 100K revenues by the end of this year. This is coming basically in the context of B2C from selling our publications in AR and VR through our online and offline channels. Uh, and uh, why for B2B? For B2B, we are basically uh, getting yearly subscription to our apps with personalized pages for the companies who are willing to share their AR, VR content to our application. And uh, for all of the experiences that we developed, the, the, the pricing relates to the kind of complexity and animation that uh, we need to drive according to the specific customer needs. Okay, is the product live on the market now yes. or is it, it is live on the market? Yes, and we have, have some revenues, Sorry. Have revenues been generated to date or? Uh, have we have generated uh, in 2000, we, we, we were funded in uh, June 2018. So last year we generated a range of 30K to 50K and we are estimating uh, 100 by the end of this, of this year. Uh, we have two apps already on the stores, which are free to use for end users. Uh, and available both in Android and iOS. We have four publications already live, uh, sold through our e-commerce, through our shop, online shop, and offline libraries um, and news agents. Uh, and we have developed a number of, uh, of personalized projects for uh, some customers like uh, PNG in Italy and uh, European Space Agency. We are building an app for uh, uh, climate change uh, education and some other customers in the context of uh, entertainment and tourism and art. And how much funding are you looking for? Uh, in the first round, we are looking at a minimum of 500K, 500K this year, up to 1,000. To be able to really start uh, expanding our team and uh, broadening our portfolio. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you so much. Any questions else? Okay, thank you so much. I have a question. Uh, anybody uh, of the first two uh, speakers, I mean, uh, the first two start uppers, don't you think that you should try to pivot uh, or uh, introduce uh, an, um, how can I say, a plan of experience? expansion abroad because the crisis will last in Italy as far as I know uh, so you think you can survive this way with this revenue model in the upcoming months uh, as boosting, as I am, boosting revenues I mean as far as our, our market is concerned we are operating worldwide we are not limited to Italy uh, we want to expand at European level at least in the context of the current year uh, and, then, and then based on funding that we hopefully will be able to get, uh, we can uh, expand even further. So we are definitely not a limitation. And actually in this, in this context, uh, in this business, there is a lot of opportunity at the moment uh, because of the uh, pandemic crisis. Uh, because uh, at least in Italy, everyone is now trying to move to the digitalization uh, where they were a little bit late until uh, just uh, last year. So that we don't see that as a limitation, like more uh, as an opportunity. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Do we still have time? Yes, yeah. please. Yeah, sorry. It's just um, a question about the, the cultural uh, side of the, of the product. Have you thought about some parents may not wanting their children to uh, play a lot of time with those games, even if they are uh, educational? Or uh, um, so have you, have you thought about it? Well, actually, our vision is to try to build on the core of the traditional tools uh, 
and enriching those uh, with, uh, uh, with the power of uh, technology of interaction. That's why we are starting from paper publication. We are creating books. We are creating coloring books and adventure books that people can, can that kids can actually, or young, young teenagers can actually just read and uh, seeing through the application, uh, the content, the enriched content in, era, in AR and VR. So we are combining the power of tradition with the power of technology and definitely leading to something which may be more di digitalized, but uh, we don't want to lose the connection with the tradition of paper and books, at least for the B2C. Thank you. So guys, let's continue in chat. Okay, please introduce our next startup, please. Uh, thank you, ladies. The next one is Federico from Chain Block. Are you Hello. ready? Hello, everyone. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I'm sharing the desktop and uh, okay. Yes, please. You can start. Yes, it's not open. My my Beach. sister reference. Yes. Okay. Well. You are dealing with it. I would like to remind judges to vote. Okay, I'm ready. Yeah. But it's it's not a presentation now. Sorry. We did um block okay right if you want we can miss you for now and okay oh, yes, please. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry nice to meet you i am federico pecoraro ceo and founder of chain block the first company in italy um, since 2013 uh, in a cryptocurrency world and uh, in uh, the blockchain world our system it's uh, easy and fast and uh, for buy in uh, easy mode uh, your cryptocurrency with cash credit card bank transfer we have uh, 11 atms uh, in italy uh, we have sold um, thousand bitcoin and thousand cryptocurrency uh, now our customer and user for atms it's uh, ten thousand user and uh, we have uh, two provide uh, for ATM. We have ATM small and uh, ATM big for buy cryptocurrency. And um, we concentrate for uh, the process KYC and AML for anti-money laundering. Uh, this system, it's perfect for uh, our compliance and legal in this world because uh, we have many, many problems uh, with the uh, institution and uh, for this work and uh, it's seven years i'm working on this platform and uh, the big atms um, create uh, the chain block cards it's possible having uh, this card for uh, wallet uh, behind and uh, behind you have your cryptocurrency for spending uh, whatever you want and uh, in these last two years i have created uh, this platform exchange it's uh, the platform for buy and sell uh, cryptocurrency in, uh, in easy mode with wire transfer um, and uh, in uh, yeah, one more minute left so okay. maybe be quicker yes uh, yeah sure it's uh, easy and safe for uh, buy and sell instantly with bank transfer and uh, here we've taken the license uh, by uh, institution for our uh, in all aspects compliance for 28 countries uh, also, um, it's possible to register your profile in uh, four projects with uh, your registration and the same uh, with this um, platform, uh, very easy to create uh, your order and uh, buy or sell your crypto. And uh, also we have created the unique mode for buy crypto uh, cryptocurrency with credit cards and debit cards uh, instantly in two click in three minutes. Uh, Chain block pay it's the last uh, platform we have uh, created for all merchants to able to accept the cryptocurrency and uh, we have created uh, all projects to enter and exit uh, for all users and uh, with all uh, instruments uh, we know uh, to access. 
with cash, with the uh, wire transfer, and with credit cards. This is chain lock. And the time is over. Thank you. Thank you, Federico. You can uh, stop share your screen. Yeah. So, judges, any questions? Don't be shy, please. Where's a regular question about the traction, the revenue? Yeah, I have, I have a question. Hi, I think we met uh, some time ago. Um, you, you mentioned the number of ATMs machines. How many are they? We have 11 ATMs in Italy for now. Okay. And uh, provide during the last year, we have provided for 4 million transactions in cryptocurrency. Uh, only the ATMs and the uh, other two platform uh, contain 3 million for uh, uh, in complexive uh, 7 million by transaction for our users. Yes, uh, just a question. I know, I know that there are several providers of ATMs and the platforms of ATMs around the world, uh, much, much bigger than you. How, how you hope you can compete with the, with the competition? How much, how much is the funding that you're requiring? Yeah, we, we sell uh, not the machine with the ATMs, but the service. We have now five uh, hosts and uh, we have um, a create a contract for hosting uh, our ATMs. But uh, we provide for all. We provide for liquidity, we provide for communication, we provide for, uh, we give a key in hands uh, uh, for the user. And the user and the host take um, revenue fee and we're splitting uh, the revenue fee. Yes, yes, it's clear, clear. But I, I mean, even there, there are a lot of competition. There is one very big in America uh, with a lot of ATMs. So yeah, how yeah. Do, you, do you plan to cope with, uh, with this uh, huge competition and huge funding? Yeah, 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 sure, I know. Yeah, I know that we have three producers, but uh, many, many hosting. In uh, my side, uh, I have uh, all platform to buy cryptocurrency with cash, with the wire transfer, and uh, with credit cards. It's uh, all compliance for 28 countries. And um, for Italy, ATMs, uh, you know, the cash uh, is very, very uh, important. It's a, a lot of problem to manage uh, cash. Okay, how much money are you raising? Uh, I'm searching uh, 1 million for the first round before ex for expanded uh, the web uh, of ATMs, uh, but for growth, uh, we take uh, the PISP, the payment uh, instrument provide, and uh, we have taken the license for that, the, the first parts of the license, because uh, we create um, IBAN for a new user, for uh, accounting system with uh, wire transfer. And now we search uh, this for growth, uh, our market. All you, all you view, it's uh, all by myself, all by my investments. No banking, uh, no route investments, no one. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you to you. Any questions else? Okay. So let's continue in chat. Uh, Kate? Yeah, thank you. The next one is Carlo Dafara. Uh -huh. Can you see my screen? No viewer. Yes. yes, thank you very much. But uh, please turn on your video with your face. Oh. Sorry, just a second. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just a second, I return to my screen. Okay. Thank you very much. My name is Carlo Fa, CEO and one of the founders of Node Weaver. And uh, I want to tell you something about computing uh, today. Most of the software in the world runs outside of the clouds, runs outside of traditional data centers. It runs at the edge where 75% of all the data created by businesses is generated and processed. But the edge uh, is a different kind of information technology. It is made mostly of small systems, 
deployed in tens of thousands of locations, in stores, inside of industrial systems, on top of telecom towers, in places that may have limited connectivity or be difficult to reach, or sharing the fact that they run critical systems. And if something stops, your users are not getting services or production lines grinds to a halt. What happens if something fails, both uh, hardware or software? The existing solutions require manual intervention by skilled technicians to go and resolve problems. Uh, solutions that are complex and difficult to manage uh, and are mostly difficult to scale to thousands of locations. What is needed is the flexibility of the cloud, but the ability to run everywhere, even on the smallest devices, and should be able to run without requiring any user intervention. That's why we have developed NodeWeaver, uh, which is a platform that runs uh, any kind of application and manages the distribution, uh, the control and operation, uh, thanks to its uh, intelligent autonomous system. Basically, every system learns from what happens to all the others, so it becomes smarter the more we expand, and are, it, it's able to do more on its own. Uh, we are a platform that runs a uh, power distribution for solar farms in Africa, we provide uh, artificial intelligence inspection to robot welding machines in Canada. We do uh, intelligent video detection in Peru for law enforcement. We do data migration for autonomous cars in the US. We run any kind of application, no matter how complex. And the important point is that it becomes self-managing. It does not require any user intervention anymore. Uh, the market is uh, uh, very large. It's uh, uh, around $170 billion already in 2019. It's growing around 30% years over years uh, with uh, manufacturing, energy, and retail among the most valuable of all, uh, each with thousands of deployments each. Uh, we have been working on this for the last nine years, uh, mostly funded by the European Commission uh, with some good recognition in the past and uh, good analyst uh, coverage. We are a team, of core team of uh, seven founders uh, between Europe and the US with a group of developers all over the world. And we have currently more than 300 installations in 10 countries. Uh, we just closed uh, six days ago our uh, first uh, large redistribution agreement with the third largest hardware manufacturer in the world, Supermicro, uh, that has selected us uh, uh, to launch a new uh, retail product uh, designed to uh, do point of sale. Uh, we have a Fortune 500 IT manufacturer which is designing their edge product on, uh, on us, uh, which will launch at the end of this year. We have four currently major trials mm -hmm. with the company with more than 1 billion euros each in revenues. Uh, among them, one of the three largest uh, US automakers, one of the major retail chains in the, U in the UK, and one of the biggest uh, uh, industrial manufacturer in the world of automotive components. Thank uh, you, Carlo. That yeah. is over. Really? Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you so much. You can stop sharing your screen. So let's start Q&A session. Who will be the first? Do not miss your moment of glory. Usually the question is about the traction. Can you tell a little? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we uh, started uh, um, promoting the system to uh, large uh, system integrators and hardware manufacturers in September of last year. Uh, we closed our first the major uh, one, uh, as I said, six uh, days ago. We are uh, working towards a second uh, partnership, uh, which is specialized in the telecommunication market. We have currently around 200,000 euros in revenues so far, and we expect to reach uh, uh, around 800 to 900,000 this year uh, with the significant increase uh, uh, next year because most of proof of concept in large companies involve a minimum of six months of uh, testing. Uh, they have uh, a, around uh, uh, 60 location to 100 location, so it's a major effort. 
Um, we are targeting to close uh, at least one major retail contract uh, between, uh, within the first quarter of next year. Uh, we should give uh, annual revenues of uh, around 2.5 million uh, euros um, per contract. Thank you, Carla. It uh, sounds a little bit better connection. Or only I have these troubles, I don't know. Oh, me, I, me too. Yeah, me too. So let's continue my being chat. Yeah, because it's very hard to hear exactly. Okay? So, okay. So, uh, Kate? Yes, the next one is Alicia. Hi, everybody. Hi. Can you hear me? Um, welcome. Hi. Yeah. Thank you. She will present entire digital. Yeah. Just a moment, please. Yeah. Can you see the screen? I see myself. <laughs> oh, yes, perfect. Okay. Uh -huh. Full screen, please. Okay. Full screen. Uh -huh. okay. Okay, I'm ready. Yeah, but, but turn on your video. Just now? Turn on your video with yourself, with your face. Okay, uh, I'm sorry, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you see me? Perfect, okay. I share my presentation, can you see it? Yes, please. Okay, when yes. I can start? Yeah, let's start. Okay, hi everybody, I'm Alessia Vangi, Chief Marketing Officer and Co-Founder of Ventura Digital. We provide dynamic data-driven application platform for media outlets and every online business. We want to solve a problem about content creation industry that has stalled for 20 years. There was pure technological innovation, pure attention to user experience, and too much information online. Otherwise, for the companies, there are too many and too high costs to produce content, and the model is too traditional. Entire digital solution is based on a completely data-driven approach. We use AI for every phase of content production. About content discovery, our system suggests that what kind of content the user wants to read or share or watch. About the production, we use an hybrid model, a crowdsourcing platform for 10,000 content creators from all over the world, and a natural language generation system for a different kind of text that need data re-elaboration. About the quality, we use natural language processing system, and in 2021, we want to do content recommendation. So we want to suggest the right news to the right user, just following the online navigation of the user. This is how we do it. About the generation, we do news gathering. We understand the meaning of text, and we generate text. And about the processing, our system approves content according to syntactics or semantic rules. So we have two lines of business powered by the same technology, media outlet and data-driven content in SaaS. About media, they are the proof of concept of our technology, and it's working because millions of people search our content production. We are going to open eight countries, and from 2021, we want to sell our technological solutions to every online business because we understand that many large companies are essentially publishers, so they have editorial needs. This is our current situation. Two countries launched. The turnover for last year was 1.2 million. Only few people manage this technological process. We won the IBM Startup Program at CS 2020. We were selected for best innovation. Forbes says that we are the new digital journalists, but we don't want to replace journalists. We want that our system can help them to produce content. This is our team. Just a few words about the sale and founder, Massimiliano Squillace. He exited, exited four times. One of them is about digital publishing. Thank you very much for your attention. And remember, content is always the king. Thank you so much. Great speech. So, I'm here. Just a moment. 
Okay. Yes. So, can you, yes. Uh, can you please explain better how your revenues are generated? What kind of uh, revenue stream you have? And give me yes. maybe some examples. Yes, we have two lines of business media outlets and technology in SAP. About media outlets, we are based on advertising. So I can say that um, there are 55% of advertising, 20% about SaaS recurring, and 25% e commerce and affiliation commerce. Thank you so much. Any questions, else? Could you talk a little bit more about the product? So are you providing a content management system for media outlets? Is that essentially what you're doing? Yes, uh, we provide a CMS for every online business, but our content production is based on a completely data-driven approach. Um, data-driven, it means that we uh, read, uh, we scrape um, social network or uh, social engine and we understand the data and we are able to produce content um, successful because are based on data. Content that's already in the repository of the media outlet. So you're basically taking that and repurposing it. Yes, but not only for media outlet, also for a, a lawyer, for example, or a doctor that needs content for his website. Right, okay. Thank you so much. Any questions else? Can you give some examples of your current clients? Sorry, can you repeat? Sorry. Can you give us some examples of your current clients? So who are your clients today? Uh, we are different clients. Uh, for SAS, for technology in SAS, we have two first clients involved in this process, Microsoft and Yahoo. We sell them uh, our content production. And for advertising, we have some um, clients, for example, Amazon or uh, Zalando. And go on. Thank you so much. Any questions, else? Okay, so let's continue in chat, guys. Thank you, great speech. Yes, the next one is LT Energy Group, represented by David Tuzi. Um, the judges, uh, don't forget to vote for our startups. It's very important. Also, uh, for um, a reminder for all our guests, you can share your contacts in our chat. It's uh, in this way. We will make some networking. David? Oh. Hello, here Fabio. Oh. Good afternoon, everybody. Hello, Fabio. Did you see my screen? Yes. I don't know where. Okay. Good luck. I'm ready. I'm Fabio manager for LRT Energy Group. LRT Energy Group is a high tech company active in clean tech and uh, energy summit. And I want to tell you how we are going to improve citizen lives. We do that by developing IoT technology for outdoor application focusing on our first product named Energy Life. The company was born in 2018, pre-incubation in 2019, and incorporated in the same year. We are currently going through two acceleration programs, one in UK and one in Italy. And this is the team, David with experience in business development, Gerardo and Alberto more technically involved, and myself supporting David and particularly working on go-to-market strategy. Energy Lab main function is to save energy deploying light on demand, the basis for our MVP, which has more integrated features. How it works? It's pretty simple. Thanks to plug and play motion sensor, the controller regulates the light intensity. Dim down up the light intensity. All energy consumption data will be stored onto a cloud space and information will be available in a visual dashboard. Here we have a detailed insight of energy light advantage. It can bring a significant pollution reduction. Uh, plus it has the short payback period, fully scalable and flexible enable predictive maintenance plan 
And last but not least, it's called effective energy uh, efficiency, up to 80% of energy saving. How we do plan to succeed? Product sales, subscription-based service, on-demand maintenance system, updates and upgrades. The market value is estimated to more 700 million euros and is expected to grow up uh, like 20% in the next five years. Here cemented the market in four main categories as the result of, uh, of our uh, contact service. Uh, how we are different from our competitors, we mainly focus on outdoor P2B and about traction through market research, we got that 85% of interview is in favor of our technology, 5% asked an estimate and we got 26 letters of endorsement and we got the honor to coordinate uh, one call of Horizon 2020. For some numbers, we have invested around uh, 12,000 and we are currently looking for seed investment. And in this last slide, you can see our sales forecast performance. Year one, two, we focus on customer acquisition and market familiarization. Year three, we expect a sales boom. And in year four and five, we expect uh, to have a steady growth. Thank you very much for all your kind attention. Thank you. Thank you. It was a speech. And especially for your wonderful look. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so let's start Q&A session. The judges, we are waiting for your questions. Are you so excited? Does that no help? Yes, my presentation was uh, pretty specific. specific. <laughs> <laughs> pretty clear. <laughs> Today we have uh, active ladies. It's great. Priscilla, Mara. Yeah, okay. Sure, I'm I'll, actually I'll, curious. I'll, you want to go ahead? The eyes. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Priscilla, I'm actually please. curious you. about your sales cycle, so I, I assume you're selling into government. Uh, how has that been going so far? Well, uh, we are looking more for B2B than uh, B2G because it's always difficult to uh, work with government, but uh, we have a revenue with a municipality here in Italy, the, that's Kivasso, and uh, we seem to close up in, uh, in the final year. But we are, we are open to every business. Thank you. Um, my turn. Um, two questions, Ashley. One is how long your sales cycle uh, could be? Do you have an expectation? Uh, have you, you know, somehow um, tested how long it could be? I mean, considering the kind of decision-making process you should deal with. Hmm? in the energy space always very long second question uh, what kind of impact are you expecting uh, from the you know lower sensitivity to the cost of energy that uh, the recession we are living in for the next couple of years uh, uh, will will drive hmm? well, what would first, be your reaction yes for the first question uh, if i'm no mistake four months five months pretty and we practically sell a cycle. Uh, we are uh, using uh, uh, with this service. Uh, we sell the product, uh, the, uh, the maintenance, the update, the, the upgrades. So uh, we want to create smart service and for the impact we expect uh, to move into IoT application. So we're, uh, in the future we are not more in uh, to sell products but this type of application the data analytics uh, so we can improve the citizen the citizen life okay and, and are you expecting any impact on your uh, uh, first couple of years of activity as a consequence of uh, lower sensitivity to, to, to the cost of energy which 
is probably likely in the coming two years. Where in Europe we have a lot of investment in public municipality. They are uh, uh, here in Italy. We know we have uh, old lamp and we need to change all this lamp in the lead lamp. And we have to do this uh, not one step, not only one step forward, but two steps. Not only to the LED lamp, but also in a smart lightning. With maybe uh, we are working also in this in uh, artificial intelligence lighting. Uh, we we all we we have uh, favorable uh, favorable policies, and we are green and system sustainable awareness. Okay. Thank you so okay. much. Any Thank you. Else? Thank you. Any questions, else? I have Thank one, you. if I can. If okay. I may. Uh, just very quickly, when you meet with clients, um, what is the typical profile of the people you have to win to get your solution on board? Because you're halfway between a cost-saving solution and a technical solution, so it's difficult to find somebody who can understand both things. Yes. Well, firstly. Uh, we ask uh, a lot of people and we did a lot of service and everybody ask data because our smart lighting have sensor, you can customize uh, and, uh, these sensors and everybody ask us uh, data. They don't, they care about the, the green campaign, they care about uh, the policies, but that and possibility to save, um, it's more important. They want to know how many cars uh, move under that, that lamp. They want to know how is the CO2 in uh, that range. Or maybe in a, a mountain city, they want to know uh, uh, what road uh, have more uh, uh, snow. Thank you so much. Any questions, else? I have a question. Uh, um, yes, please. How much does it cost for a, a small town, let's say, to implement your product in all the lighting of the town? Okay, that de depends. Because, uh, I, how I said, is customized. So you can put more or less sensors in the, in the lamp. But, uh, I guess I can do tear lamp for six, uh, six, uh, seven, seven thousand euro tear, tear lamp, all all included, with a uh, fifty percent growth. Okay, so guys, let's thank continue the chat. Dear judges, thank you for your activities and. Uh, Please don't forget to vote for our startup number three, it's Gate Star as Gate Stand. Yes. Uh, the team still waiting for your votes. So don't forget, please. Yeah. Uh, the next one will be Stefana with the startup Utego. Hello. Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Please. Hello. Okay, hello. Uh, it's nice to know you all. Thank you for the opportunity. I will share my presentation. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay, I'm ready if you want. I'm ready. So, Utego is a mobile app, or say, is a mobile app offering mailing a financial aggregator. You can see it on the left. It means uh, if you have more than one bank account, you can have a unique dashboard of all your financial belongings instead of offering and uh, opening different uh, online banking. Otego is not only this, but uh, has uh, other three functionality, a marketplace in which find other products not yet owned, a financial education window, and uh, the first financial auction tool on the right to allow users to get more by joining together the negotiation power. The market in Italy is not yet mature. Uh, more than 11 million people have more than one bank account 
and uh, with the competitors that uh, in B2C are owned by banks, while in credit positioning uh, is to be independent by banks. A great value in my opinion, because so this no bank will have a look to all financial belonging to our users. Independent in terms of shareholders, but partner and allied to all institutes. Data analytics sold, lead generation fees, deal closed fees, and our aggregation engine sold in white label are our four revenue streams. Now, the app is ready and downloadable in beta version in the App Store. Only for the financial aggregator, we are waiting for banks of Italy authorization that will arrive in August. Pay attention that due to Bank of Italy, we still are the first and only Italian fintech 100% independent asking this authorization and it will be for us a valuable, a valuable asset. We have three contracts signed and 22 working table opened, seven partnership and we collected the seven of 5k followers. Italian markets validation has validated us with more than 1 million raised in 2019. And nowadays we can count on a team of nine people, very skilled in IT, business, legal, compliance, and of course banking. Four founders have more than 15 years spent in banking, an authoritative advisory board, and a structured governance and control organization. Our plan is to launch Utego in retail market and firstly in Italy, to gradually attack small business, corporate, private uh, users also abroad. In terms of product, the auction tool is the most innovative and scalable one. We estimate to grow from 33K users to 340K in five years, and to reach the break-even point in the third year. All these only in Italy, you can imagine also abroad. To realize our business plan, we are looking for around 2 million, mostly concentrated in advertising and marketing investments. And we believe that this investment could return to investors 2.5 per in three, in three years and 9 per in five years, on top to the 50 potential of Italian fiscal credit on innovative startup investment as Utego is. Thank you, Stefano. Uh, thank you. Great pitch. Any questions, dear judges? Yes, please don't be shy. Who want to be the first one? Uh, what is the main value for, for the customer? Can, can you explain a little bit more? Uh, the main value for the customer is to have uh, um, a repository in which have a complete dashboard of their uh, belongings. Uh, and a user experience quite inclusive in their financial needs. So um, our, our aim is uh, if you need to, to, to aggregate your accounts, uh, your bank accounts and have a, a unique overview, you can. If you need to buy other products, not only financial products, but also insurances, uh, telco, energetic sensor, and so, and so on, you don't need to close the app and open other uh, devices, uh, but in the same app you can find it and uh, having buying them also aggregated them. If you do not understand something, you can select um, in a financial education tool and have a, and have a look to all your uh, lack. And in the future, if you need more, uh, you can join together your negotiation power with all of the other users to gain more. Think about an investment, for example, of uh, 1,000 uh, euro. You, you, you ask uh, uh, an index tax for these investments and you have uh, a small power. If you present to the bank one million or two million, your power is bigger than that one. So in only in all, all in one app, you can have all your financial financial habits and needs. 
and the source of your revenue will be the main source a commission from selling additional services or what no the main the main um, revenue stream is uh, the deal close so if you find the product in our marketplace or or if you participate in an auction um, we um, we pass your lead and your uh, your the details uh, to the bank and the bank will contact you when you uh, close the deal uh, the bank uh, give us back uh, a fee on the deal close that is uh, the, the 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 majority of our revenues okay thank you so much thank you any questions else okay so let's continue in chat okay Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Stefan. The next one will be Mark with the unchained carrot. Hello, everyone. It's not uh, Mark. It's Andrea De Francisci. I'm representing uh, Unchained Carrot. Can oh. you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Just a second. Oh. I cannot share the screen. Oh, good. Oh, click the button present. It's a, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to. It doesn't work. Now it's loading. So tell us who is Mark, who is Andrea? Okay, Mark is uh, my co founder. Mm -hmm. Is the CEO. I'm Andrea, the marketing director. Oh, great. I don't know why it's happening this. Maybe bad internet connection, no? Uh, not actually. So maybe I can go after this one, uh, the startup, the, the other startup, maybe. Okay, okay. Perfect. So the next one is. Andrea, with our rights. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, one second. Uh, okay. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Is all okay? Yeah, yeah let's start and good luck. Okay, thank you so much to invite us to, to stay here. I'm Andrea Kionkas and uh, I'm born in a museum. My father is director of the museum and every day I speak about art, uh, innovation, how technology can improve the trust uh, in the art market. Uh, the art market is so really big, is uh, over uh, 60 billion, but for us it's really interesting the other 20 billion of art service between legal uh, services, uh, insurance, expedition. But one of the most problem of the artworks is uh, is over 50% is fake or misattributed. This is a big problem for the provenance and due diligence when you want to sell or buy an artwork. For that, it's important to understand behind the artwork as it's in the incredible stories between one artist created the artworks, the action house sales, gallery, professional. Today, all of this history we are losing. For that, we have created the first art passport where it's possible to track all information between the long tail of art market players, artists, galleries, the museum. The user can confirm information among a, another user and receive the revenue share about that. ArtRise is based on uh, three principal services, the SaaS platform, the art manager for management, the collection, the art rights for the art passport, and art concierge for the B2B and uh, bespoke service. Uh, the business model is the early subscription for the art manager, the revenue share with the user for confirmed information for authenticity, and uh, insurance uh, advertising. We are so proud to be a first player because uh, art rights is based on proprietary technology with blockchain and intelligence, artificial intelligence. And we have created the first automated process for insurance and shipping of affordable art up to 50K of value. This is with a big player, Arte Generali. We, we present soon this service and it's possible to buy an insurance expedition without approval and confirmation of insurer. 
we, uh, we are now on the market. Uh, we started on coronavirus. We are so proud about that because we support so many artists in, uh, in daytime on, at home. We have uh, Seal of Excellence, so many partners, over 1,000 one early adopters, uh, 2,000 artwork, uh, and so many press coverage about art innovation, about our, our uh, project. We working. Uh, we have raised over three hundred k euro, and now we we starting a fundraising for two million with a bridge to five hundred k to one million five for go to market in a, in a Europe and finish the go to market in Italy in next six months. Uh, the our team is incredible. Is we have over fifty years of experience. Uh, we having we have make a. He accelerated on program with net value of Mario Mariani, uh, Abinsula is leader tech partner, uh, CRS4, and uh, other partners. We are incredible vision. I hope to, to have you like uh, an art backer. Thank you very much, Andrea. So, dear judges, any questions? So. Yeah. As I understood, you just started. So, and you have some users on your platform yeah, and some traction, maybe. Yeah, that's correct. The platform is on the market. We have uh, over uh, one thousand early adopter, and uh, we selling now the the first subscription. And uh, we 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 have a two years of development of the platform, but for the go to market we have a so big strategy with magazine leads and uh, community congress about that. The platform is now on sale. Okay, you are still pre revenue, yeah. Yeah, that's correct. Ma <laughs> We have uh, uh, the last two, three years, we have 150 euro of revenue. And uh, now we start in, in, this, in this time with the new revenue about uh, art rights. Okay, thank you so much. Any questions else? Dear judges, be active, please. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, thank you. So let's continue in chat. Kate? Yeah, Mark, if you are ready now, we can go back to yeah. you. Okay, I think uh, it all works now. Can you hear me? Yes. See? Okay, perfect. So I'm Andrea De Francisci and I represent uh, Jane Carrot. Uh, our claim is to make rewards uh, more available. How we do it? So we're building a SaaS uh, that technically allows marketers to easily create uh, data-driven rewards based on uh, blockchain and enable them uh, to architect uh, an omnichannel customer journey. Uh, we help them basically increase in conversion and long-term value of uh, the marketing funnel. Uh, what we do is aligned uh, with uh, industry leaders, uh, what industry leaders say. So we shift uh, in an era of ecosystem-driven loyalty and uh, we uh, use uh, uh, transformative uh, technologies. We use transformative technologies uh, in uh, our platform that uh, enhance, in, enhances uh, uh, engagement and experience uh, omnichannel with a reward-based uh, application. We use uh, blockchain because blockchain is uh, standardized and allows us uh, to use uh, and share rewards uh, between communities, between channels, uh, and uh, uh, between different kind of organizations. It's all data-driven, and uh, of course, being on blockchain prevents uh, frauds. Uh, some companies are already using blockchain for marketing. One example is uh, Singapore Airlines, and there are more to come. Uh, our founding members have collectively uh, many years of experience in software development and especially in the blockchain space. Uh, we have also experience uh, with a startup raising more than uh, 1 million euros and also uh, we have experience in sales. Uh, our uh, co-founder Bjorn Zeman was uh, in uh, Gartner and working in Silicon Valley with startups and uh, big corporations. We started uh, as a software development company specialized in uh, blockchain space. Uh, and in uh, 2018, we powered uh, uh, this uh, successful uh, uh, ICOs and other uh, uh, 
and other companies uh, in their uh, marketing efforts, but not only. We also created uh, uh, tokenized uh, economy, uh, system economics. We also integrated third parties such as KYC and AML, but we uh, understood uh, pretty immediately that our uh, strength uh, uh, and the strength of the technology would be on uh, uh, the uh, marketing space, so reward-based marketing space. So in 2019, we worked uh, on integrating uh, this technology into one uh, platform. And uh, at the end of uh, 2019, uh, we developed uh, uh, the, the beta and uh, we found the first customer in uh, Juice Brothers, which is a franchising chain uh, based in the Netherlands, but also in the US. And we generated the first revenues. So for them, uh, we integrated the first uh, reward-based blockchain uh, uh, loyalty program. And we integrated not only, as you see, the online e-commerce, but also the uh, offline uh, shop with uh, posters that uh, uh, connect uh, the, uh, with, uh, with the customer and create the engagement. How does uh, our platform work? Uh, so as you can see, it's uh, very easy to create a, a reward. You go on the platform, you create a reward, for example, the voucher, and you connect the channels, uh, for example, uh, MailChimp, uh, WordPress, uh, but also the cash register system, such as Counter, which is also our partner, and uh, uh, other uh, systems such as WordPress uh, or uh, others. As soon as uh, this is ready, then uh, you are uh, able to promote uh, the, the campaign. And here you see the uh, example of uh, Juice Brothers. So uh, you scan the QR code, you register uh, your customer, and you immediately validate the reward and uh, share the reward to your customer. At that moment, you are, on the, you are in the control of uh, their data, and then you can retarget them immediately with an email, with a survey, with a referral program, or with other discounts that can, they can also share uh, with friends. This is basically how Unchained Carrot works from uh, uh, the start of uh, creating the rewards and connecting the channel to engagement, uh, conversion, and then uh, retargeting and retention. It covers uh, everything in the marketing funnel with the rewards. But we can do also more than that. As, uh, you, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, we are uh, based on uh, industry leading technologies that are ecosystem driven as well. So we allow engagement between different companies, for example, by sharing uh, rewards and sharing also the value of uh, each other's community. And the potential is also uh, much more, it's even higher than that. Thank you, Andrea, the time okay. is over. I gave you a one extra minute for calling you Mark again. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> I was also, I was uh, done. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you so. Any questions? If you have any questions, please. I'll go ahead. Um, sorry for asking no <laughs> a lot of the questions. Uh, can you explain how the blockchain piece comes into play here? I don't understand why it's needed. So we associate uh, the uh, reward, for example, a, a voucher, a discount, a free product, a token uh, from a game, for example, in Fortnite. And uh, we basically, blockchain basically allows uh, the system to be omnichannel. That's why being standardized and safe can be shared between different kinds of channels, for example, e-commerce uh, or even shop. And you don't need to uh, connect a different kind of database, which is uh, an old technology that is used uh, now. And to do, to do all this, uh, you should connect database. And with us, there is no need for that. You just use uh, the, the code, the, the blockchain, uh, uh, Ash, and then you are uh, you are connected immediately to the new channels, and you can validate it with our app. And also, we can connect uh, with the POS system and, uh, for example, WordPress if you have an e-commerce, uh, WooCommerce, or other uh, type of uh, CMS. Okay, thank you. Any questions else? Your judges. I'll go again. Um, who are your clients? And just out of curiosity, uh, why Unchain Carrot? Because uh, the carrot is the reward that we offer to uh, the client, and the Unchained is because uh, we uh, we unleash the power of uh, blockchain, so we enable the omnichannel uh, uh, customer journey, which is very important, and of course that's powered by blockchain. Uh, so the customer is uh, Juice Brothers. Uh, we started integrating the technology and it was ready in uh, January. 
but uh, the campaign couldn't start because of the coronavirus, so it was paused uh, by the, the shop. Now we're starting back again. Actually, yesterday it started, and now we are uh, uh, the client is getting customers from uh, this campaign. Uh, during the coronavirus, we also had uh, uh, some uh, businesses such as uh, restaurants integrating uh, our technology with uh, an online menu and uh, the cash register system. So we allowed them to sell uh, uh, more by uh, engaging with uh, uh, potential customers or with uh, Facebook advertisement, etc. Uh, with potential customers uh, and they got in the funnel by offering an immediate reward for their uh, action. So we also allow a business to stay afloat in this, uh, in this market as well. And we are also connecting with other businesses uh, currently. And we are incubated in uh, Digital Magics. Thank you so much. Any questions? Uh, else? Okay, so guys, I have a great news for you. Uh, thank you. Was, uh, thank you so much. It was uh, the last but not the least startup for today. No, 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 the last will be now. Ah, I'm sorry. Then, Don't forget to get a stand. <laughs> wow, I'm really sure. Paolo works us <laughs> okay. from the beginning. Okay, thank you for the patience. I uh, have attention for your startup, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, now I share the screen. Share. Are you seeing something? No. We see you. Share screen. Okay. Okay, just a second. Excuse me for the delay. It's working now? No. Oh, just a second because uh, uh, Zoom doesn't have the permission. Okay. Dear attendees, if you are hearing us, uh, do not forget what for your favorite startups. You need to go to the landing page, uh, sign up, and Put your likes to our startups. Okay, maybe it's working. Yeah, now? now I see our landing page and your presentation. Make it full screen and. We okay, okay, here we are. Sorry <laughs> for the wait. I'm Paolo Castioni, I'm the CEO of Get a Stand, and we bring to the world a digital revolution for face industry. So what is Get a Stand? Get a Stand at the beginning was in, 2000, in uh, 2018, uh, a booking exhibition spaces platform. So uh, with our solution, you can make a reservation about exhibition space in fair or in some events. During the last uh, months about the coronavirus crisis, uh, we developed a new, uh, uh, two new different line to uh, give us more uh, effort to this industry. Uh, and later I will speak about the digital fairs and especially the fairs company uh, shop. And what is the booking exhibition space that our uh, core business since two years Ago, uh, we are working in a market that is uh, that have a very big uh, big volume. That is a 50 billion uh, in Europe. That is the all the exhibition spaces uh, in uh, all the fair that uh, are pay every every year. Uh, we are working with uh, five million exhibitors market uh, that participate in one million event. What is the problem of this uh, uh, wonderful market? It is uh, completely under digitized. So uh, our solution uh, bring a di digitalization to this uh, uh, to this industry and. Uh, can uh, provide a simple connection with, between the organizer of the event and and the e exhibitors that want to book a space uh, during a fair. Our revenue model is very simple. Uh, we take the 15% uh, commission about the uh, on the um, on the payment for the reservation for the space uh, that pay from exhibitor to the organizer. Our traction uh, uh, for the last 18 months, uh, our traction uh, was stopping in February because the coronavirus uh, 
stop all the fair uh, all around the world. Uh, we reach uh, 3,000 uh, exhibitors uh, currently subscribed. We work with 300 organizer, organizer in all the Italy, and we already work with more than 500 events in uh, all the Italy. This uh, produced for us uh, more than 50,000 uh, uh, 50, euro in uh, revenue. And this is some example of our uh, current clients, uh, like the, this is more or less the more uh, important fair in Italy or, and also the Mugello for the sport activity because there are also um, exhibition space there. For the digital fairs, I, I want to just want to go clicky, quickly because this is a new service that we can provide from two months ago. Uh, it is uh, collect by four step process in, in 20 days. If you have an event, you can put it online with us. And uh, the end, but uh, uh, the, the, new, the new service that we provide is a fair company shop. Uh, we work in another market that is more bigger. We have uh, 275 billion euro. That is uh, the total amount of sales made in fair during one year. The problem is, is the company that is not digitized to sell online. So with our platform, they can start to sell online in the right place. We have a different business model between the, the other one that is based about the subscription model. This is one more cheaper and one more um, expensive. It depends about the feature you want to have in your plan. And now we have 200 people that want to buy uh, before the, the project is ready. The project will be online eff uh, effectively in uh, two weeks, maximum two weeks, I hope less. And we have already 200 people that want to buy. Our team is well composed. Uh, extra than me, there is Biagio and Camillo. We are the two co-founder. Alessandro is our um, account manager, and Claudio is our full stack developer. What we are looking for? We are looking for 300k euro uh, to reach our goal for this year. And uh, especially why invest now? Because there is a very big market opportunity. We have a, a strong sector of knowledge. We are the first in Europe to digitize this market and we have a proven traction that uh, we know what we do. So thank you very much, guys. And if you have uh, uh, some question, uh, I'm here. Thank you, Paolo. Okay, stop sharing. And yes, please. Any judges, any questions? Yes, please. Who want to be the first one? Since nobody is talking, I'll go for it. Um, have you changed anything in your business strategy uh, since the past few months have cancelled all the events uh, um, for the COVID pandemic? Uh, we, we, we was working with a lot of events in all Italy, from the north to the south, and when the crisis arrived, uh, all the event was, uh, was delayed. So at, at the beginning, we have like uh, two or three days uh, closing in our room, uh, desperate and screaming because uh, our business was completely stopped. And we start to renovate us. Uh, we start to put uh, one new uh, business side, uh, um, like a digital fair. So if you are an organizer, because uh, after the, during the last year, we were selected by a uh, accelerator program we raised our first money there uh, 155k euro and so we start to have more uh, inside of our market we know a lot of more organizer and we speak with them and we say uh, you have to delete your event if you want to bring them online you can speak with us otherwise uh, we, we say to the other side of our marketplace that is full of company that want to participate to the fair, uh, if they want to sell online, when 200 people want to buy, we start to develop this situation and now we are ready to, to go online. Okay, thank you so much. Any questions else? So, as I understood, you sell services to as B2B services and also as B2C, yeah? So exactly. You're going to sell directly. At the beginning, we was born uh, just a B2B business because uh, uh, we are working with the companies uh, that want to participate in a fair and with the people that organize that fair. It's just pure B2C. Now we open a new line for B2C market uh, for our company that want to sell online. Okay, thank you. Right. Okay, any questions, Charles? 
Okay. Thank you so much. So let's continue in chat. And now, uh, in one minute, we will close uh, our voting. So uh, you have a, a couple minutes uh, to maybe change your mind and change your marks. After this, I will close uh, voting and we will know the name of our winner today. Uh, in a few minutes, uh, discussion, and uh, our guest Sasha uh, Johnson will talk a little bit about today's situation in venture capital. And then we can discuss with our judges what's going on in Italy, in California today. Sasha, how are you? I am good. It's warm. <laughs> it's, um, like it's not even 8 a.m. here, but it's already hot outside. It's early morning, yeah, in California now. Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, how many countries do you have signed up today? It's not just Italy, like what other countries they have? Startups are, ju are just from Italy, but uh, judges, no, not so many as in Brazil two days ago, <laughs> but still I probably we have maybe five, seven judges from other countries, so m mostly from, from Italy. Good. So it's we're a, waiting for the results of the um, vote. Yeah, absolutely. Lena, we are ready. Yes, please. Yeah, we are ready. And so, guys. So we have, we don't believe, no, but, uh, and I don't believe, but we have uh, uh, three short places today. Oh, my God. Yes, please. <laughs> Yes, please. So, first one is Utego, uh, third place, and um, LT Energy, third place, and Note Feather, third place. Your applause, please, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. It's really the first edition. When we have uh, the uh, three startups, you have the same score. Yeah. So, uh, second place goes to uh, anti digital. Yeah. And the winner of our unicorn battle in Milan today is Pachai. Oh, Alessandro, our congratulations. Can you publish the results on the landing page, Lena? Yes, now uh, just one one moment, and also I want to um, uh, to say to tell about the winner according to voting of our guest today. It's Utego. Your applause, also please. Stefano. Hi. You were double winner. No, really great. Uh, thanks. You have a great fan club. Thanks. Uh, thank you. So, uh, if Alessandro from Page I with us, maybe you would like to tell a few words about your expectation. Yes, we are very happy to hear this, and we can't wait to to, to participate in the final uh, in Silicon Valley. Um, we would like to to thank all the investors uh, and the attendees that participated in this event. Um, we're following, um, we're growing very fast, guys, and we're very happy. Um, we are hiring four or five people a month, still reaching the, uh, the requirements to, in order to scale up. And uh, I think that uh, talking with, uh, with all the attendees today and also participating uh, uh, the final in Silicon Valley, thanks to uh, the organizers, uh, will be a huge opportunity for us to actually um, uh, 
have a space also uh, uh, there in US to Softland and to, uh, to let more and more people know about us. Thank you. Thank you. And before I um, start the panel discussion, I would like to ask you to turn on video and uh, to make a screenshot of our today's participants and panelists to post it on social networks then and to leave for my memory. So if you would like to have this screenshot, please turn on video and I uh, will take the moment. Yes. Oh. Yeah, I see, see. Julia? Ah, Julia maybe on call. So smile, say pizza, and the second time, just a moment. Super, super, thank you very much. And now I share my screen to to present our special guests, Alexandra Sasha Johnson, who will mentor our discussion, panel discussion about the investments during, during the pandemic. So, Alexandra, the stage is yours. Uh, <coughs> good evening, good morning, good afternoon, whatever people are tuning in from. Um, so, I won't bore you with all those famous quotes about uh, how beautiful companies were started during crisis. Because companies like you know Apple, Microsoft, Pinterest, um, Groupon, they were all started during um, a crisis. And uh, the opportunity now is uh, bigger than ever for startups around the world to get to to see uh, and reach out investors all over the world. Now, I understand that the topic today is mostly, by the way, can you see me? Because I just see a picture. Yeah, yeah, we see you, Sasha. Very good. Um, so, I am privileged in the sense that, yes, I live in Silicon Valley, have lived here for a long time, and I've been in venture capital for over a decade. So I can tell you that for Silicon Valley investors, it's business as usual. Maybe what's different is that if before we would spend most of our time looking at new companies and new possibilities, now we mostly work with companies that already exist in our portfolios. Understandable, and of course, if you're a huge fund and you, know, you have several billion under management, then it's a wonderful time to go and buy new companies because valuations are coming down. But if you are a smaller fund and you specialize in early stage deals, pretty much like the ones we're listening to today, then uh, uh, it will be much harder for those companies to get the first round if they are not known in the US. And that is why um, uh, opportunities like the, the ones the, uh, the online presentations present are so important because this way you're idea is your startups will be known to investors outside Italy. And I have to say there's this phenomenon um, that Italy has many interesting industries. But for some reason, the startup scene is not as active as I see in other parts of the world. I guess we yesterday we had the uh, opportunity to talk to Brazilian um, presenters, but uh, I can tell you that they, they, that industry is growing. So I looked into what's happening in Italy and what I've discovered uh, that, that when it comes to entrepreneurs and startups, plenty. But private investors, for some reason in Italy, do not really want to be as active as they are in other parts, even of Europe. So what is happening that talented uh, entrepreneurs from Italy are actually going to London uh, or Germany, and that's where they find their big investors. I don't know if uh, all of you know who is the founder of um, a very famous company, Candy Crush, for example. Can anybody tell me who is the founder? Oh, of course you know. It's an Italian. <laughs> 
But that company is now listed as one of the startups in London, uh, King.com. The financial scene, various mobile apps, financial services companies like Solido, Megaplight, Trulair, they are also listed as uh, British companies, but they're all founded by Italian entrepreneurs. Um, so also one of the most interesting incubators I've visited over the years actually is based near Venice, it's a H farm. I don't know if you guys have been there, but it's amazing. Uh, the founder of that incubator actually brings the most interesting uh, investors and CEOs and global thinkers from around the world. And, and uh, the, their sessions are amazing. And it's really uh, on top, I would say, well, it's, and they have a different model as a white combinator, but when it comes to the quality of startups, they attract. It's uh, quite, quite impressive. So what can I tell the startups that uh, are not located in Silicon Valley? Of course, eventually, if you want to grow a global business, you will have to show up here. And of course, the winners uh, will, I don't know how we will do it physically, <laughs> not, maybe not in July, maybe another month, uh, when the global um, craziness will be over and we will get to see each other physically. For now, I, I would suggest looking at how um, startups from Israel were developing. It's a small country and uh, they always knew that whatever they build technology-wise will have to be um, interesting to other parts of the world. So from day one, their st startup model will reach out and, and make sure that they would uh, be accepted in the US obviously, uh, but also reach out to Asia and Europe. So when it comes to a country like Italy, I know that the quality of ideas and, and those small businesses that you guys build is on par with the whatever quality entrepreneurs build in Silicon Valley. It's just the ecosystem here is, uh, well, we, we can talk about why Silicon Valley is Silicon Valley, but I would say it's mo mostly about investors. Uh, if you cannot, for example, you, you got some money uh, from angel investors, uh, maybe even close the, the route, so I would suggest for now, try and reach out to a bigger investment audience, which is now in, in London and in Germany, uh, mostly for European startups. And then if you believe that your technology is of a global quality, absolutely by all means reach out to Silicon Valley because that's where they'll help you scale. So with that, I'll, I'll stop. And if people want to have a discussion, ask me questions, talk to each other. Alexander, you, you decide like what format. If people have questions, I'll be happy to answer. Yeah, I really would like to make a discussion. So probably uh, our colleagues from Italy can tell us a little bit more about the Italian ecosystem, what's going on now, what, what has changed in the past few months. Have they all left? Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, uh, venture ecosystem in Italy? It has Was it correct in my assumption that uh, you don't see many venture funds in Italy or maybe they exist and we don't know? Like, where, where do you fundraise? Where do you go to get your first check? No. But maybe I can give my insight. Uh, as a yeah. as a C startup, uh, I can talk about uh, really can talk about v VC funds. Uh, so uh, we collaborate. We are uh, inside uh, an incubator now, which is Digital Magics, and they also provide uh, venture capital, but uh, at the later stage. So uh, on the seed stage, I I see some. Uh, uh, some problems. There is also a lot of interest right now, especially after the coronavirus. And I would leave uh, my my colleagues in the Series A round uh, or even higher to give them give uh, their opinion. <laughs> but I would imagine uh, with these pandemics, this is a good time to start a company, especially uh, for uh, software companies, for various gaming platforms. 
or uh, financial startups, mobile payments, this is the best time to get going because it doesn't take a lot of capital to actually start a business. And uh, uh, what, what I think is important that we, when people say that life will not be back to normal, well, I don't know what normal is, but obviously it will be different from what we had before. Uh, the startups, the beginning emerging companies will need to figure out what the pain points are and improve the way we live. And that would be the new industry. There will be new business models developing. Uh, you know, when uh, Zoom started, they didn't expect to have what they have. So they would be one uh, in an example that you build the real technology and then you see what the market is doing and you grow with the market. If you look at another giant like Airbnb, a darling of everybody even several months ago, of course, obviously they're in big trouble, but because their technology is solid and they have built by now a real business, they will survive this storm. Uh, maybe it will take a year, maybe it will two years. So it's really important to build a, a company and understand the reality and then um, you know, grow with the reality. So in that sense, uh, people in the startup world should, uh, should be happy <laughs> because it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity to create new businesses. Yeah. Maybe I, I have a question to VCs from Italy. Uh, you have really great fashion industry. Do you have a lot of startups which trying to disrupt this industry today, um, make something new? Uh, uh, Antonio, we don't hear you if, you if you are talking. Can you hear me? Oh yeah. In uh, independently from the discussion you started, uh, uh, if there are uh, venture funds in Italy or not, the 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 thing is that when you register a startup, so you are not talking about a project. When you register you an innovative startup, you have immediately a client that usually is a, a corporate. If you are in a corporate uh, venture capital accelerator like uh, team book up for example uh, or uh, another one uh, otherwise you work for a university because most of accelerators or incubators are inside university so it means this is personal that works for the university so when you talk about venture funds the venture funds in italy usually are directly connected or with banks uh, or with uh, public funds such as uh, Casa Depositi e Prestiti that is here or uh, Fondi Italiano di Investimento and so the thing is usually you consider an investment when you invest in a, a business model with revenues a startup doesn't have any revenue so you cannot invest in startups so basically you are Prob probably funding a project, continuing funding a project or a product that you already have or the product is the person. So usually uh, academic uh, accelerator, for example, used to invest in people that can work for the partners of the university. The partners of the universities are the corporates that invest in the university. So the corporates are not interested most of times to invest in a startup that the accelerator created, but they are much more interested to hire the personnel of the startups. This is it. Yeah. So basically, a venture fund invests or a bank invests when you have budgets. The first 18, 24 months, you cannot have budgets. If you cannot show budgets with revenues, usually a bank or a venture fund won't invest a dime because it's this way everywhere in the world depends the sector let me let me disagree uh, i'm managing a fund that is actually investing before the startup is incorporated we are a technology transfer fund backed by casa deposito press and the european investment fund uh, uh, we invest in industrial technologies, robotics, medical devices, hardware stuff, or uh, industrial software stuff. So uh, what we call deep tech technologies. 
And we basically, as I said, run investment from the proof of concept level, which means even before the startup is incorporated, and we are working on the alpha prototype, no business plan, no lines. We just work around together with research teams and trying to assess which kind of business model we can establish once we have POC, which kind of company we might incorporate after the POC, et cetera, et cetera. And actually our fund is one of the five funds that have been established in Italy thanks to the Italtech program. And it's about 200 millions that already deployed half from the Italian government and half from, actually half from uh, Casa Depositi President, half from the European Investment Fund for these kind of investments all over Italy. So I wouldn't say that we, there are no funds investing in such early phases because they are there with a significant budget. Not to mention that within the programs of the Italian government and Casa Deposit Presti um, Venture Capital SGI, which is actually the asset management uh, company working with fund of funds, there is also a new plan for technology transfer, the accelerator program, the corporate venture capital, etc. And many of those funds that will be launched by the new programs will be focusing on very early stage as well. So uh, I actually have a personally a different view of what is happening in Italy. And I also have run already uh, investments where I put the money just on the people, uh, even 10 years ago. Uh, one company which actually is the orbit, a space economy. Nobody was talking about space economy 10 years ago. I have invested in that company just based on the four founders and their idea. There was not even the patent. We established the company in the Florence incubator Florence University Incubator. Now that company is one of the most successful company around the space economy that we have in Italy. So I wouldn't say that there is no money early stage. Of course, there is high selection rate. Definitely, this is, this is the case. We are very selective, but we are allocating our money and the money is there. Oh, it's wonderful. You sound like any fund in Silicon Valley. That's what you do. You know, you go in and you pick the best. And uh, like when sometimes people ask me, is it possible when you fund just an idea? It depends on an idea. And you, what you're saying that uh, you do the range. And yeah, I do. It's, um, it's a great market to be in. And, and I actually wanted to answer Alexander's question about the fashion industry. This is the one sector which I know several startups from Italy that they have developed software. Uh, they, the companies actually work with the big department stores uh, and they started in Milan and now they moved uh, to other capitals like, well, Milan is not a capital, but it's a fashion capital uh, in New York. And they uh, give uh, customers an opportunity to exchange data and uh, digitize all the goods at that store and, and you can have a fashion advice right there and it's all online. And these companies were started in Italy. I would say it is a big industry. And, um, and um, yeah, and then I saw actually an interesting space startup, uh, but they moved to Silicon Valley. Uh, but yeah, the scene is quite active. The scene is quite active. I would encourage um, uh, European investors to look more carefully on the Italian incubators because the ones uh, formed with the universities uh, they have the expertise on the same level as we do here in the Valley. So the only thing I will say that when you say venture capital, people um, identify with the word risk, venture, adventure, and the European investors in general uh, have a tendency to like safer deals, not um, they don't want to lose money on that. So in that sense, um, yeah, and, and the bureaucracy. From what I've seen in the European startups, especially, uh, I looked at the um, Station F uh, in France, and that's their answer to uh, our Silicon Valley. But still, the, even um, with the support from the government, still the layer of the bureaucracy is quite, quite robust. So it is easier to start a company in the US than it is in Europe. But the investors who have worked on the European market for years have figured out a way how to uh, help the startup to navigate through that comp complex situation. And when people say like smart money, what is smart money? 
I know what smart money is in the US, but also I know that smart money in Europe is also helping uh, the company navigate through the that, that bureaucracy. And that's what good money does for our company. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, um, I just wanted to relate to what Mr. Reddy said before uh, on the investments uh, uh, in the in the venture capital market, and um, I I don't agree um, that the the investments are not made in the seed space because um, the the investment <laughs> through funds of funds uh, during the year has been made uh, from the seed stage to the late stage. In Italy, most of the funds were focusing from 2012 to the seed stage and the early stage. And then um, let's say in 2015, 16, they started covering the early stage, late stage phase. Uh, now we are seeing that there is a, a new gap in the, in the seed space and that we need more um, let's say uh, more stakeholder in that part of the market but the mission of cdp venture capital is to cover all those funding gaps that has been created in the past and to support the system from the start to the end um, so the the sgr started its, its operation at the end of the year and the um let's say the, the output and the outcome of the work that has been uh, that has been done the past few months and that will be done in the, in the in the future uh, is going to be something that you will see in one, two or three years, but it's something that uh, is there and uh, we're well aware, aware of the um, of the market and its characteristics at the moment. Thank you, Mara. So, Lena, probably. Yeah, uh, probably uh, we we say thank you so much for all our judges for being with us uh, today, for all our guests, to all our guests for being with us today. Our special congratulations to our winners. We hope that in the nearest future we will come uh, to your country and we will have offline event and uh, we hope we'll see you personally thank you for your time and uh, see you uh, at our upcoming events uh, so kate could you yeah, yeah. of course uh, everybody are welcome uh, to join our upcoming events uh, in scandinavia and in istanbul uh, in turkey we will host it again together with lena so join Dear judges, if you want to hear pitches of Turkish startups, just ping me by mail and we will add you to the expert board. And Scandinavian as well, so feel free to contact me and I'll help you with this. Yeah, so stay in touch. I will leave the call open for some minutes to uh, give you opportunity to check the messages in chat. I see that uh, many participants leave their contacts and page, LinkedIn pages. So do not hesitate to contact me, to add me to uh, friends and hope to see you in person soon in Milan or some other countries around the globe. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye-bye. 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 Bye. 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 Bye.